Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm from Indie Games, and today I'm back playing Seduce Me. Um, let's go ahead and get back into it. It's been a little while since I played this. Um, we're about to get kidnapped by whatever this girl's name is. I don't remember what it is. <laughs> All I knew was that I was in trouble. I'm recording my mouse again, unfortunately. It was an accident. All I saw was darkness. I felt numb as I was taken to a place I didn't know of. I couldn't even move my lips to scream. The sound zipped past my ears. First of the interior of a car, then the outside, then an echoey space with whispers and cackles of people vibrating through it. However, the wrap around my eyes was eventually removed from my face and my bonds were cut. <laughs> I like all the graffiti. It took a while for my eyes to adjust, but I found myself in a warehouse surrounded by devils, including Malik's, who was smirking at me. Nicely done! <laughs> I'm sure those little shits will come running to find you when they realize you didn't return to your precious little mansion. They'll search everywhere for Hey, Malix. Malix walked over and set the barrel of his gun against the skin between my eyes. It'll be so funny when they find your dead body instead. Well, clearly you didn't listen because I have a protection spell on me. Hey, let's do the thing. I I don't remember how to pronounce it, but this is Eric's true name. I think it was Uzre Uzeris. I don't know. All of a sudden, a bright purple light engulfed the room, causing the devils around me to cover themselves. What the? Ugh. Gusts of winds rushed past me, almost forcing me back. I covered my face with my arms, bracing myself and standing my ground. I tried to peek through my arms to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. As the gusts slowly started to die, the light began to fade, revealing Eric. What's up? Eric. Did you miss me? What an intro. However, the seductive smile that graced his lips quickly disappeared as he turned to Malix. As Malix lowered his arms, Eric glared. You really are evil at its core. Kidnapping an innocent woman like you did. It's disgusting how we demons are confused for your kind. <laughs> Look at this little manhole Eric right here, boys. Might as well sleep with a disease. The devils around them laughed, including Eris. Well, that's her name. I felt a twinge of anger, but Eric must have taken it from me and added it to his own. Eric flicked his wrist and arm across his body, produced a small whipping noise through the air. However, Malik hissed and reached for his cheek, as if the air had slapped him hard. What the? When Malik removed his hand from his cheek, I stared wide-eyed at the large slash that was revealed on it. A mixture of red and black blood gently dripped from the wound, causing Malik to growl angrily at Eric. So ho ho! Pretty boy! Yes, balls, huh? Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, time to make this pretty boy a dead bitch. I love how edgy Malix is. It's so great. He's super evil. All of a sudden, Malix lifted his gun toward Eric and pulled the trigger. I gasped and tensed up, not believing what I was seeing. As I braced myself for Malix's bullet to embed itself into Eric, However, a large, ethereal tendril shot up in front of Eric's body, sprouting from the ground by his feet. Quickly after the bullet evaporated into the tendril, several others appeared, forming a dark purple crown around Eric's body. What the? What is that? I don't know. Did you expect me to come unprepared the second time around? Thanks to my lovely princess, I can now use the full extent of my powers. Unfortunately for you... That means I'm afraid you will lose this fight. Oh, you cocky little shit! Max charged him his energy and began to fire bullet after bullet at Eric and Anchor. However, the tendrils danced across Eric's body with ease, blocking each one as if they were mere pebbles to a wall. That noise is kind of terrifying. The remaining devils stared, trying to figure out what to do, help Malix or walk, watch in silence. Eris, however, walked up beside me and crossed her arms as she watched with an amused smirk on her face. Die already! Eric chuckled before snapping his fingers, causing a row of tendrils to appear behind him, pointing their sharp ends at Malix, who continued to fire bullets at the Incubus. The tendrils uprooted themselves and floated into the air, straightening out into to large spikes before quickly splintering into multiple thinner spikes. 
I could only stare, completely lost and intrigued at the sight as Eric ripped, whipped his hand across his body again. Oh man, let's play a talking game when you're slightly stuffy. At Eric's command, the spikes flew at Malik, slashing and stabbing into his body. They were thin, barely making pencil-sized wounds, and only a few went into his body. The others scraped and scratched at his skin as they flew by. This didn't kill Malik's, however. Malik growled loudly before charging at Eric, causing the Incubus to step back in slight shock. Malik pointed his gun at Eric, closing the distance between them and filed the fired as the barrel almost reached Eric's face. Instead of the bullet ripping into Eric, a large explosion forced both away from each other. Malix bounced off the far wall and landed on his knees, groaning in pain. Eric, however, slid across the ground, landing on his stomach. Wow. Eric! Malix slowly planted a foot on the, into the ground to stand, but froze before doing so, staring at Eric's body. Eric, on the other hand, slowly rose and turned to face Malix head on. Eric reached up and wiped a small stain of blood that had painted the side of his lip before growling almost animalistically. At that moment, something in the air changed. The air instantly went from frantic to still in energy. What could have been described in tone as the color red quickly turned into a deadly mix of purple and red as everything began to blend together all at once. How persistent. I guess I'll have to go all out on you to finally rid the world of you. I love how Eric's like super demented. Was this the extent of demon power? My eyes never strayed from Eric's face, however, even as it changed. His eyes began to glow a bright golden color as Eric began to walk toward Malik's. Let's end this. Sorry, I keep forgetting to move my cursor. Malik aimed his gun and fired at Eric, but the bullet never made its target. As the shot erupted from the barrel, the ethereal tendrils erupted from Eric's back, creating a wing-like barrier for the bullet. Whoops. Malik stared wide-eyed as Eric's tendrils absorbed the bullet and grew almost larger in size and in number with each step Eric took. Eric's skin began to slowly morph and shift, changing from human to something else entirely. Something about Eric grew dark and menacing and the transformation was making him even darker. Before I was allowed to see Eric's new form, however, a pair of hands quickly covered my eyes. Instinctively, I reached up and gripped them, trying to pull them off. A voice stopped me. It's me. Don't look. Did Damien cover our eyes in Sam's route, too? I listened carefully and let the last two words linger in my mind. Don't look. Why? What was being hidden from me? I wanted to know, but something told me to obey Damien's command. I could hear everything, however. I listened as Malik stood up with a pained grunt before being pushed against the wall with another shout. After that came sounds of flesh ripping and blood spurting, followed quickly by Malik's screams. Maybe it was better that I wasn't able to see. Eric, enough! Almost instantly after James' command, the sound stopped. The air grew silent as a pair of footsteps slowly made their way to where we were. I just had to be sure he was dead. No use in letting him have a chance to revive. You're getting sloppy, Eric. You've lost your glamour spell. Glamour spell? What did he mean? Why did Eric sound so different? Why was this being hidden from me? It's a spell that makes us look human. I froze. Look human? They didn't look like humans after all? What did they look like? Like demons. As if Matthew knew what Damien was talking about, Matthew spoke up, followed by the sound of a cork popping out of a bottle. Well, not for much longer. Here. That's convenient. Ah, uh, there we are. Thank you, Matthew. I could hear the small clinking of glass being passed before hearing Eric guzzle down a liquid of some sort. The feel of the air around me gently began to warm back up, insinuating that everything had returned to normal. Finally, Damien moved his hands from his my eyes, allowing me to see around me once again. The devils, including Eris, had fled. On top of what I assumed to be Malik's body was a dirty sheet that was quickly turning red from blood. I couldn't tell if it was even his body. It seemed lumped together like a pile of parts. Because Eric shredded him. The boys, however, had gathered around me, all of them, including Eric, looking like nothing had happened. What? What just... I tried to speak, but everything zipped around in my head at the whole event, and I felt like speaking was impossible. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. I could only nod. What had what had happened boggled my mind to the point of disbelief. I was second-guessing everything, lost in the sea of what and how and when. 
As we walked out of the warehouse, I looked to Eric for some form of sign that I wasn't dreaming. Eric smiled softly at me before looking ahead, trying to look like nothing had happened. We're all just going to ignore the fact that Malix is, like, super dead in the corner. It was over. Malix was gone and the boys were finally safe. A wave of relief th ran through my body at the thought of never having to deal with that group again. At the same time, a pang of realization hit the back of my mind. The boys were only going to stay until after Malix was defeated. That was our deal. As we approached home, I could feel something heavy weigh down my heart. It was late, but the boys led me inside and turned on the lights in the lobby. Finally, we can relax. It will be good to have some rest without devils breathing down our necks. Ugh, I'm just tired. Can I hit the hay early? I think some sleep would be good for all of us. What did you guys do? Hmm. I looked to Damien, knowing he could read my mind and frowned. I didn't want him to know my thoughts on the situation. Yeah, bed sounds good. I wanted to just end tonight. Too much had happened and I felt dizzy just trying to figure it out. However, Damien spoke up, stopping all of us from moving. Should we be gone in the morning? The air became still with tension. The realization of the situation hit the boys like a wave, forcing them to turn to me in curiosity. They had remembered their deal and were now awaiting me to decide their fate. I gulped, face to face with the reality of the situation. The boys were leaving it up to me. They looked like they were willing to accept whatever I had demanded. It was only fair, though, after all that had happened. I looked to Eric, feeling my heart flutter in my chest. I didn't want him to leave, but would he ask to stay? I hoped that he would say no and ask me to stay longer. As if he knew what I wanted, Eric moved and stepped up to me, gently moving a strand of hair from my face to behind my ear. He stared into my eyes and spoke, gently stroking my cheek. Princess. You've been such a wonderful help to us already. But I'm afraid that I must ask more of you. I've grown fond of being here and of serving you. Would you allow us to stay? My heart skipped while a large red blush ran across my cheeks. The boys stared at Eric wide-eyed but didn't dare to speak out. Eric stepped back to give me space, returning to where he was. I moved my gaze across each boy, trying to make a decision. If they left in the morning, I would never see them again and my life could return to normal. If I did decide to let them go, that would have been for the best. No goodbyes, no delays. But did I want to? They had done so much for me in a small amount of time. I wanted them to stay. Why would you say go? Just be like, no, leave. Leave. <laughs> I wanted him to stay. I merely smiled, staring at the man I'd come to have feeling for, before speaking at last. I would love it if you all could stay. The boys cheered tiredly, but nonetheless enthusiastically. I giggled at the sight. It was cute to see everyone so excited, despite the tiredness that ran equally through our bodies. But it was a rough day. My home is your home, as long as you can still help with chores. The boys nodded in unison, agreeing to the terms I had set for them. Despite the good situation, I felt myself slowly slipping into unconsciousness. Don't pass out. However, James quickly clapped his hands together, getting everyone's attention and waking me up, making sure I didn't pass out on the floor. Alright, everyone. We're all very tired, so let's head to bed, shall we? Oh! Yeah, sleep is actually a thing. Right. We've had a very long day, but it will be good to just relax tonight and tomorrow. Sleep sounds really good right now. Yeah, man. I watched a very happy smile grow onto Eric's lips. He shared my excitement, knowing we could be together longer. Who knew how long we would stay together? All I cared about was that I would be with him. The others quickly left to finally rest, leaving me and Eric alone at last. My heart fluttered a bit as Eric walked closer to me, gently wrapping his arms around my waist. I placed my hands onto his shoulders, leaning close. Yet again, you spoil me. I'm very unworthy of you, princess. Hush, Eric. I wanted you to stay. I stared up into his eyes, getting lost in them. I didn't know if it was the tiredness or my growing attachment to him, but I felt myself lean into Eric's body, and invited me to stay a while, making me forget that my bed was also calling for me. Listen, about what happened at the warehouse. No, it's fine. You did what you have to do. I understand. 
I had accepted everything while in Eric's form. He was real and he was someone I didn't want to be without, even if that meant nodding against my curiosity. Besides, I was too tired to explore that memory further. Eric nodded before kissing my forehead sweetly. Come, let's get you to bed. I nodded before Eric gently lifted me up into his arms like a bride and carried me to my room. I didn't want to leave his arms, leaning my head against Eric's chest, but eventually I was slowly lowered to my bed and covered with my bed covers. I was still in my school clothes, but I was too tired to strip or care. I looked to Eric, fighting a yawn from escaping me as he gently ran a hand over my hair. Have a good night, princess. I'll prepare breakfast for you in the morning. I nodded with a tired smile before watching him slowly stand and leave my room, closing the door. A wave of happiness washed over me as I laid in bed. I made a good choice. Sure, it would be hard, but I could tell that I would be able to manage it. Help around the house, and being with a man who I was slowly starting to fall for would be worth it. I slowly felt my exhaustion take over. I let sleep consume me as I drifted into the darkness in my mind. Everything was peaceful. I was happy. And we know from previous uh, playthroughs that this is a lie. <laughs> I love this game though, like seriously. I kind of want this song. <laughs> you are an interesting creature. Hi, Diana. Got that angle, though. I opened my eyes to see a woman staring down at me with a very sly smirk on her face. I opened my mouth to scream in fright, but a hand quickly covered my mouth. Uh-uh-uh. No screaming now. Too early, silly girl. I could only stare up at the woman above me. I felt weak, not having the strength to move and fight her off. What was going on, and why was she here? Hmm. Why do the boys like you? You're unique, yes. But that can't be all that you have going for you. Rage began to consume my core again. This woman, whoever she was, was making me mad. She must have known, as she let another smirker on her face. Ooh, you're feisty. That could be why. Before I could bite her hand in anger, she removed her hand from my lips, standing up and staring down at me from her place next to my bed. I quickly sat up and glared daggers at the intruder. She was very beautiful, but I felt more anger than amazement. Who the hell are you and why are you in my room? The woman began to laugh, making the rage inside me increase. I wanted to punch her, but I waited for her answer. <laughs> How silly of me. I forgot that we demons are not well known of in your world. You can call me Diana, little human. Diana? Demon? You're a demon? I am, but I'm much more than just an average demon. What do you mean? Silly girl, I'm a succubus. I stared at Diana in shock. A succubus? First incubi, now a succubus. Great. I had now met both genders of sex demons. <laughs> Diana crossed her arms under her bosom and looked at my body. What a creeper. Well... You are pretty. Her grubby face. A goody little two-shoes, aren't you? I moved out and stood from the bed, still glaring at Diana. Why are you here? Oh, I just wanted to see who my competition was. Competition? For the boys, of course. They don't belong here, and yet here they remain. I want to know why and remedy this little issue. This girl was seriously pissing me off. Issue? What issue? They want to stay here so they can. Silly, uneducated human. You don't understand the important roles these boys play in the Abyssal Plains. You keeping them here is practically imprisonment. You have about ten seconds to leave. Is that a threat? <laughs> How cute. What are you going to do? Kill me? No, but I am going to save. <laughs> Alright. And if I do? You barely have the strength to stand, little human. I can rip the rest of your energy out and knock you into a coma. You'll never be able to wake up again. Touch me and I'll... Enjoy every minute of it. 
I felt my body freeze and heat up to almost painful haze. My mind began to feel fuzzy as Diana stepped to me and caressed my cheek. Now, you're going to listen to everything I say without any questions, got it? I nodded. Good. I plan to bring the boys back to the Abyssal Plains. Why? So that I can take my place as queen of their realm. They have no reason to be here in this silly little world, so I'm going to make sure they return home. Okay, Pumpkin? I nodded but growled. My rage couldn't be concealed despite the hold I was under. You evil bitch. <laughs> Call me evil all you want, dearie. I'm not evil. You're just in my way. I felt Diana lean into my ear and whisper, making me unconsciously shiver in both pleasure and annoyance. Now, be a good little human and go to bed. I'll make sure they're gone before you get home tomorrow from school, so make sure to say goodbye in the morning. I felt my body move on its own to lay in bed and cover itself with my bedsheets. I glared at Diana the entire way down. Diana laughed at my futility. I'll get you. Oh, please do. All of a sudden, her voice deepened and became cold and demonic, sending a violent, scared shiver down my spine. Her red eyes practically illuminated in the darkness of my room as she glared at me. Give me a reason to make your life a living hell. I gritted my teeth, trying to fight back against the hold on me. She couldn't have been that tough. She needed energy to survive, right? I was sure she couldn't have had enough to hold me down forever. Diana then laughed and returned to normal. <laughs> oh, and make sure you don't tell the boys I was here. I want my visit to be a surprise. I felt the hold on me disappear, allowing me to set up and practically growl at Diana in rage. What's stopping me? You must not care about your friends and family as much as you care for the boys. I stopped and stared. What did she mean by that? Was that a threat to my family? Diana smirked at me, knowing the confusion behind my eyes. Let's just say that. If you tell the boys about me... I'll make sure that no one will care for you, and you'll be all alone in this little house until the day you die. I could feel fear creeping into me. Alone? How could she do that? The world word demon reverberated in my head, reminding me that I was facing off against something supernatural. A human with a shield versus the devil was one thing. A human on her own versus a demon was another. Have a good night. And with that, Diana sank into the floor through a magic purple pentagram, which disappeared as her head vanished into the floor. I couldn't believe it. I got an achievement. Someone gets caramel! It has an apple on it. What? <laughs> it says... Oh, unlock the second set of bloopers. I don't think I've, ever... I've listened to that one. I must have. Anyway, instead of a crazy psycho devil who wanted to kill me and the boys, I had a succubus wanting to ruin my life and take the boys away. Could my life get any worse? Um, probably. So, I'm gonna go ahead and save and end right there because my birds have just woken up and they're now noisy. So, um, I think that's gonna be it for now. I will come back to this pretty quickly and then we'll get back into it. So, goodbye for now.